Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Okay, we're back. We're live. At, well, I, I guess I would say this is somewhere between 2 and 3 on a given Friday afternoon on Admissions Day. And until the rest joins us, SAS. Uh, SOS. Tech SOS. SAS is the airline. Yeah. SOS Tech Solutions <laughs> in Manoa Innovation Center. That's mm -hmm. great. And he writes a blog or a newsletter. What's the name of your blog or newsletter? Well, we have a blog. It's mm -hmm. on our website. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a print newsletter. We have all these things that we do online, so we do uh, a lot with uh, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. So we're always communicating the things that we're doing out there, uh, just because we have to get the word out. I mean, we're out there to protect businesses, we're out there to protect individuals. Uh, that's what we're all about, and we have to meet them where they are. And that's usually not on the street, or at McDonald's, or at yeah. Starbucks. Yeah. It's online, so that's where yeah. we are. You've been doing that for several years now. Mm -hmm. And I remember for a time you were a host here, one of our original hosts, <laughs> back when in the in the ancient days here at uh, ThinkTech. Well, you've come a long way. There you go. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so have you. <laughs> so Attila, you know, why should I worry? I mean, it's, it's everything is fine, isn't it? Somebody will protect me. I don't have to worry about these things. There's a long pause here intentionally, just in case you're wondering. Note, note the long pause, yeah. Now, now, if you have that kind of mentality, then that's what most people have, which is everything's going to be fine. The police will protect me. No one's going to break into my house. And then someone breaks into their house, and then what happens? Oh, my God, they're all freaked out, right? So what do you do? You get a home security system. Maybe you, you, know, you get some additional locks on your doors. Good for you, right? That's how most people approach cybersecurity. And everyone's been you know, kind of beating that drum about, Oh, my business is vulnerable, there's ransomware, there's all this stuff out there. But the real scary stuff is the infrastructure. And the infrastructure related uh, infections and hijacking and ransomware that's coming, that we're starting to see more not, and more. Maybe not my computer, but the community computers. Well, let's talk about, about the ship that brought your computer to this island. Mm. So Costco, which is one of the largest shipping companies, that, they're China, right? So one of the largest ones uh, on the planet had their entire North American operations shut down earlier this month and their South American operations shut down. In fact, the only way that you could reach the, uh, the, um, the business was through Facebook or a uh, personal Yahoo email account that they were starting to give out. Their websites were down, phones were down, everything was down. And that's just one example. We see that through utilities, we see that through automobiles, we see that through every major thing that's connected with either a Wi-Fi access point or uh, you know, even on airplanes now, now that there's ways to tie into their systems. Why do people do this? It's so destructive and silly. You know, I mean, is, is it prank? Is it for money? It's is money. it for nasty? Or are they state actors? Nah, well, it, there's some of that too. I mean, uh, you know, off the air we talked a little bit about Israel. I mean, it is well known that they are monitoring all of Palestine right now. Every single person there is being under uh, high surveillance, and in fact, there's some some things going on within the uh, Israeli inside of their uh, cybersecurity uh, operations forces, where where some of their own uh, members are now pushing back and saying that this is a little bit too far. But that's a little bit off the point. There, there's a lot of monitoring that goes off there uh, on there. There's uh, there's financial incentives. I mean, imagine uh, if uh, they could go in there and uh, change the chemical composition of drugs as they're being manufactured. Oh, wow. These kind of, chemi these kind of uh, industrial control systems that are out there have been out sure. there 20, 30 years. It's all on they're the internet. Them. Sure. It's, every, it's all there. It's all exposed. Well, and think about it this way. If they go out and they even do harvest information from you, big deal, right? They're not going to go contact you directly. They're going to go onto the dark web and sell it. And they sell it and they make money off of it that way. It's an entire industry. And this industry has been so systematized now that anyone can jump into it. Really? I mean, mm -hmm. how can I get a handle on how big it is and how many people? I mean, suppose I, suppose I go to computer science class in college and I say, I want to be a hacker. I want to be part of that industry that until there, the rest of There are so many about. things it, wrong. Do I apply somewhere? Where, where do I go? There's, Who do I call? There's so many things wrong with, with, with what you just said. You, you don't go to computer science school for any of this stuff. You don't go announcing that you're going to be a hacker. But uh, a lot of these kind of security, I mean, let's talk the legitimate side. And, you know, I'll go back to Israel just because I like Israel. So uh, Israel has uh, high school programs where they, where they start, you know, indoctrinating this, this kind of skill sets into their uh, high school students. And then they get recruited, right? Because obviously, once you're done with high school, you have to go and serve in the military. And the military has a very good uh, sense of what's needed. They give them the best possible tools. And then they come out into the private sector. 
and then they either start companies, such as like Wix is one of them. There's, there's lots of uh, little small startups that they start up with multi-billions of dollars, right? They get acquired by Google and other big, you know, dot-com companies. And they then go out and they uh, do what they can to support the industry or uh, to protect people or to, you know, provide new and innovative services that we then get to see on our mobile phones. But there's kind of like that flow on the legitimate side, uh, but in the same vein, they can also go the opposite direction, right? And that can be from any number of third actors all around the world. So, so I'd make more money on one side or the other? Right, there's money to be made on both. And this is an industry that isn't going anywhere. You mean it's gonna get bigger and bigger and more? Yeah, it's like climate change. I mean, it's 94 degrees outside. I mean, come on, guys, this is not normal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, scary because, mm -hmm. you know, the picture you paint, and you've painted it before, is, you know, sort of a dreadful risk out there, risks to everyone and risks to the community. And yet, it hasn't happened. Not really. What do you mean? What do you mean it hasn't well, happened? No, I mean, hacking <laughs> at a level where the community is busted, where everything stops. But that hasn't happened. Well, power companies have, have been, I mean, you got to remember, they, they have to kind of set things up in such a way that you know we're going to have a problem at a certain time. So mm -hmm. we see these smaller things coming uh, coming on, uh, and we see this inside of the uh, inside of the newsfeed. But most people are too busy, you know, trying to go get to McDonald's to get their their latest you know value added meal or whatever. They're not looking at what's what's going on. I mean, there's there's biological outbreaks that happen in this country every day. No one notices, right? There's there's uh, attacks on critical infrastructure that happen all day, every minute. As, as we're sitting here talking, there are attacks going on on critical infrastructure. We don't see that. Maybe it kind of causes a glitch, and then is they it don't a glitch or is it or is it an attack? I mean, how do you know that it's not a glitch? Oh, it's usually a glitch. Uh, it's usually attack. Sorry, and I mean everything from the DMV that we saw here uh, a few months ago. Was that uh, really a hardware failure, or was that a deliberate attack where all of our personal information was stolen? No one's to tell. So there's a lot of hush hush that goes on in this also. And the private sector, well, what are they going to do? Well, you know, put up a press release and scare everyone? And we see some of that. So they don't want to panic the public. Yeah, yeah, no, what for? But we'll see things like, you know, Equifax, that was a big deal. We see more and more of these every single, uh, every single month. I mean, just a few days ago, there was something on the tube. What did I see? It might have been 60 minutes about hacking into actual hacking into voting machines and voting registration records in a number of states sure. in this country. Well, no. You know, we were yeah. led to believe that, oh, yeah, there was some, you know, manipu <laughs> manipulation going on, some meddling by Russia, you know, with, with Trump's collaboration. What's the word? Collusion. Uh, I'll take that, you know, only that far as probably went further. Um, and so we were led to believe that it was not actually manipulating the voting records. But now it appears that in various places, they were capable of, of doing that, and maybe they even did it. And if they did it then and they're still doing it now, I think it's clear that they're still doing it now as we speak, as we sit here. Mm -hmm. They will do it in November. They will do it in November. And, and the crisis then becomes, can you have confidence? It's public confidence is, is the pillar you know, of justice, the pillar of the, of the republic. And if you don't have public confidence in the system, like the voting system, you know, then the whole thing is is at risk. You know, the, you know wh whether we can depend on the voting system and or, or not is a whole different kind of conversation. I, I, I would, mean, it's, uh, but, I would have, yeah. I would have confidence. You know, even with the the meddling in the social media, you know, and say, okay, people want to make their minds up on stupid social media, they can mm -hmm. do that. But to vote this way. And have it come out that way, that really troubles me. But it's, it's been like that for a long time. I mean, I, I don't think this is the first time that we're, we've seen this. It's certainly going to get more and more sophisticated uh, throughout history. There's always been voting tampering, and whether it's electronic or not. I, I don't really think that this is anything new. It's just a little bit more sophisticated. And now we have actual threat actors, and there's a paper trail. Now we can actually see a digital trail that leads back to Russia, and that's well documented and well understood. Anyone can go out and Google that. So just look for yourself. See if. You know, see if uh, if there's any conclusive evidence that shows that Russia was involved in the uh, voting uh, oh. machine tamperings, and you'll see that there is clear and inclu and conclusive evidence that does that. You don't have to take my word for it. Go ahead and look for yourself. Why but, doesn't yeah, it happen so. more? I guess I, I'm changing my question. Why doesn't it happen? You say it happens every day, but why doesn't it happen more? Why don't we have the whole city come down 
because people are busy and you know there there is some element of humanity in all this. No one wants to go out there and 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 completely crash an infrastructure. They'd rather hold it ransom or ra rather hold it hostage, make a few bucks off of it. And so that's what they're doing all the time. Uh, we see this happening in hospitals all the time. We see this happening in banks. We see this happening all across the world. Uh, the the utility companies that they're really kind of messing with seem to be in third world countries. Like uh, what was it Estonia or Ukraine a few months ago? There was uh, well, uh, Russia was, did that yeah. for sure. Well, we turned off the lights in Ukraine. Yeah. Well, we hope we hope it's them, because at least there's some some alliances there. But it's very difficult to to get in with uh, you know some of these Asian countries. Uh, you know, it's very difficult to track someone down in those places. I mean, it's it's all kind of a, a crapshoot. We have an entire global network of well organized, well documented. Do they talk to each other. Well funded. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Can, can, talks, can I yeah. intercept them? Can I stop them? Well, it's like the flow, flowing of water. You know, you, you put up one blockage, it's going to flow all around it. The internet is made in such a way so that it's not dependent on one place. In fact, uh, you know how the word cloud, you know, everyone talks cloud. You know where that came from, right? So cloud originally was a way to diagram out all the different nodes of the internet or over a private network. And when they started drawing lines between all the different nodes, it kind of looked like this big amorphous cloud. So they said, oh, well, this is the cloud now. We're going to put all our data in the cloud. We're going to put our computing in the cloud. We're going to put our faith in the cloud. And we're going to have to try to secure that cloud infrastructure. So mm -hmm. in the same way, the internet is essentially one big cloud. You can't really stop communications from one point A to point B because there's a thousand different ways to get to the next point. So that's, the, that's what makes it beautiful, and that's what makes it very difficult to police at the well, same time. Well, I mean, suppose yeah. I gave you a blank check. I want to. Mm -hmm. I want to give you a blank check. And you can do whatever you want. You can spend whatever you want to spend. And my, the mission I am assigning you is stop this stuff. Stop the hacking. Stop all these really objectionable, destructive things. What would you do? It's not that simple. It's not that simple. There's no, a, there's a, there's make a, it as complex as no, you want. No, no, there's, there's huge advantages to doing this stuff. I mean, you know, going back to the case of Israel, I mean, it's, it's prevented physical war and physical attacks from happening uh, you know, on real people and people dying. I mean, having that kind of cyber uh, infrastructure and that and that expertise and that and that ability to defend the country that way is huge. That's that's very valuable. So uh, those same tools that are in use can be used to protect as well. In fact, we use many of the same type of what would be called hacking tools to to prevent this kind of stuff from happening. We have you know ways to access computers remotely so that we can protect them. From the, from the other people who could be doing the same thing. So you gotta fight fire with fire sometimes. Okay, so, so it's, a, yeah. it's a battle, it's a yin and a yang. So which side, well, one side is gonna win on a given day, one side is gonna lose on That's a given it. day. And maybe over the long term, one side wins, one side loses. What are the factors that go into that? Uh, what, what do I need to have to be a winner? What do I need to lack to be a loser? Well, you, you talk very interestingly. So. Um, you know, going back, I was listening to a Simon Sinek uh, talk just recently. It's very interesting, and he talks about why we lost in the Vietnam War, and it had to do with the way that we saw winning and losing versus the Vietnamese saw winning and losing. Right. So for them, you know, obviously they were they were uh, underfunded. There were far less soldiers, but in the end, they were there fighting for their lives. Right. There was no like winning or losing. This wasn't a football match. This wasn't a ba basketball game with people holding points and. And you know this is the winner and that's the loser and we're done with the game. No, that's how America was coming into it. And we would come out, we'd you know blitz them, and we were way better at everything. We had higher technology, but in the end, we weren't there, right? Because there was no like end game, right? So in a lot of ways, health is like this, right? You know, you, there's no time and, and place when you can say like I am done with taking care of my body, and I am done with. You know, think tech. You know, think tech is going to go on forever, right? So that's kind of the whole point. So it's a yin and a yang. It's all the time. It's all the time, and it's a constant flow, and it's life. But what sort of resources? What sort of attitude do I have to have to be on the top? You know, because over time, one side will prevail more than the other. One, for a bit. I, one less. For a bit. Uh, for okay. For, for a bit. while. For a while. So there's going to be what, wins what do on I both need? Sides. What yeah. skills? I mean, for example, the Israelis, or for that matter, the American, um, you know, establishment, uh, uh, the computer hacking establishment. In the Pentagon, I forget what they call it, uh, but uh, yeah, you know, how much money do you need? Do you need a lot of money? Will money satisfy the problem? Um, do you need really smart people? How do you get them? Mm -hmm. uh, do you need do you need some kind of support from the government? What kind of support do you need? Um, how do you determine which side is likely to prevail? Well, there's there's a lot of factors that go into when you talk about you know end user protection versus infrastructure protection versus actual government agendas to protect 
the people as a whole, right? So when you, when you talk about blank check, there's going to be a blank check in each of these three categories. And for individual end user protection, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of uh, employee uh, education that goes into this. So there's going to be a major push in terms of education, understanding what these things are and how to get back into them. There's going to be a major technology push in the products and services. Artificial intelligence is going into this. In fact, a little bit of uh, you know, background, uh, IBM right, used to make laptops. And they used to make servers. I remember And they used to do all this stuff, right? This was just a few years ago. Yeah. Now, where did it all go? Now it's all cybersecurity. It's all Watson, right? Which is artificial intelligence. Yeah. That, that's the kind of stuff Software. that's going to protect yeah. us. Yeah. That's, it, that will protect us. That was a smart move then. Yeah. Of course. And they saw the writing on the wall. You know, everyone's making all this equipment. Why are they in this equipment business? They are in the knowledge business and protection business. And they can protect the assets oh, of any company. Yeah, looking using artificial over the horizon, sure. especially now. And we're going to take a one minute horizon. Sure. We're going to look over that horizon, and in one minute, we'll be back with the Telesaurus of SOS Tech Solutions. You got it. <laughs> Aloha. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea is on Think Tech Hawaii every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join me where my guests talk about law topics and ideas and music and Hawaiiana all across the sea from Hawaii and back again. Aloha. Hey, Stan the Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii. And they won't let me do political commentary, so I'm stuck doing energy stuff. But I really like energy stuff, so I'm going to keep on doing it. So join me every Friday on Stan the Energy Man at lunchtime, at noon, on my lunch hour. We're going to talk about everything energy, especially if it begins with the word hydrogen. We're going to definitely be talking about it. We'll talk about how we can make Hawaii cleaner, how we can make the world a better place, just basically save the planet. Even Miss America can't even talk about stuff like that anymore. We got it nailed down here. So we'll see you on Friday at noon with Stan the Energy Man. Aloha. Ah, we're back, Attila. Attila mm. Ceres, SOS, Tech Solutions. Sure. Um, so, you know, okay, I mean, governments are going to do what they're going to do. These days, it seems we have less control over what government does than ever before, at least in recent times. Um, and that goes for other countries as well. But what about the individual person? Let's just talk about protecting ourselves. Let's just talking about the audience that you are addressing. What are you telling them they should do? Look, as an individual, you can't protect yourself because you're not the target. Let's just start there. You're, the target is the database or the website or whatever platform you put your, informa your information into, and then that data has been harvested, taken out, and sold. So I should be careful in selecting the platform. Right. Where do you put your stuff? So a minute during the break, we were talking about iPhone versus Android. Mm -hmm. So maybe that choice is a choice that also involves uh, um, you know, uh, protection against hacking. Is it, is it true? Is one going to be more protection than the other? You know, this is the, this is the, the age-old question, right? Is, is that, you know, is Apple or, or uh, you know, Android going to be the better platform for you to choose? Which one's more secure? Unfortunately, it's hard to tell because uh, whenever there is a vulnerability found in the Apple Store, they can't disclose that right away, right? But there have been lots of in, uh, instances where apps have ended up on the Apple Store. They've been infections and they've you know, they harvest the data off the phone, transmitted them off to who knows where. Uh, one of the more disturbing things that we're starting to see now is that uh, recently uh, cellular phone networks open up their data networks to be analyzed by third parties. What that means is that they could go in there and see like what is going on. And consistently across the board, T-Mobile, uh, AT&T, Verizon, up to 70% of all data that's going through seems to be coming from anonymous sources or their uh, malicious and intent. On my phone. On your phone right now. So our phones right now in our pockets can be transmitting or trying to do third party attacks on remote sites. We don't know. So what the is network going on. thing. So the a network. mesh network where the whole world is involved in this huge network. Sort of like um, uh, those things that come on your, your computer and communicate secretly with other computers. Sure, that's, that, that, that is the whole point. And, you know, network rendering, that's, that's exactly how Pixar got started. That's how all these other, uh, you know, great tech startups got started, is because they offloaded the responsibility uh, onto all these devices that are out there. I mean, you think about these phones that we have in our pockets. I mean, they're, they're fabulously powerful. I mean, these things are, uh, are incredible. What do you got and, there? Uh, Galaxy. So. 
the the guys Samsung. Guys. Yeah, Samsung. Probably the same thing as you. And I got a nine plus. We got. No, I got the eight plus. Wow, oh, Attila. Yeah, we have to help you out. Yeah. It's okay. My wife will get this one next. It's all right. But uh, you know, what, what can you do? You can you on the phone? Can you fix the phone? Can I get a patch? That doesn't let this, you know, this scurrilous data come across my my phone. Well, to a degree, but a lot of that stuff is really useful. I mean, everyone loves the ability to uh, check the traffic report in real time, right? You can see, like, oh, well, I'm going down Nimitz. Oh, it's it's red, or oh, it's green. No problem, right? Where do you think that data comes from? Magic? Mm. Cameras? Mm. No, they're watching your to see phone, how, far, yeah. how fast you know, your phone is like moving. like the thing on yeah. Apple a few years ago. Do you mm -hmm. remember they found a, a file on the Apple phone mm -hmm. and it kept the record, many, many thousands of, of, of records on where you have been using the GPS. So it, it was like a living record of your travels in this universe. And the best part about that is that any third party could then query that and say like, oh, Except you look. didn't know. You didn't know. That right. They didn't tell you. And, mm -hmm. and when they were challenged about it, they just went mum, which is what they do. And they erased it. Yeah. Yeah. They, oh, with the new update, we erased this, this file. Yeah. Yeah. And you're going to see a lot more of that kind of popping up. So, we, you know, we all become victims in, in so many ways. So we nothing much we can do personally, not, you know, more than... I guess uh, uh, buying an, an antivirus machine for our computer. How valuable yeah. is that? Does not that even mean really. anything. Not really. No. Not, doesn't mean anything. Mm -mm. But 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 wait 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 wait. So I go on my machine. There's no antivirus, and I start getting pop-up windows and strange messages. Well, what and, are you doing that you need pop-up windows? Remarks. You don't. You shouldn't be going to those websites in the first place, Jay. Come on. <laughs> Look, you, you, what you have to do is first of all. Use your head when you go online. If you're going to use a computer for work, use a computer for work. Don't go fooling around on some sort of third-party okay. uh, applications. Right. Now, where those antivirus pr uh, programs become useful is to a degree, they'll filter your website traffic and say, like, oh, okay, we've, dis we've discovered something that is unusual on this particular site. Now, one of the things that we're starting to see a lot of also is the advertiser networks themselves are being infected. So you go to, oh, you know, so Wall Street Journal or whatever. It's bad enough you yeah. get an ad. Now you get an ad with a virus. Of course, yeah. <laughs> Facebook ads, Yahoo ads. This is this has all been infected over and over. But and over I care again. about yeah. cleaning my my system. I care about you know getting that off or pr pr protecting myself from that. Are you saying I shouldn't? Well, I'm saying use common sense, and then it's not going to become such a big issue anyway. In fact, one of the great things that about uh, Windows 10 is that Microsoft has invested heavily in its Defender. Uh, software now for years that uh, defender was a big joke right like oh it's this piece of crap software it was optional on windows 7 windows 8 and then windows 10 now it's now it's integrated and microsoft is actively harvesting data from all of those windows 10 Are computers you us? well they're making their antivirus protection better so essentially they're crowdsourcing all of that information that is going through and it's built in natively into the operating system they're getting a lot more data and they're harvesting and harvesting and they're becoming i believe that they're going to become the next big Antivirus authority. All these Nortons and McAfee's and all these, you know, nonsense, you know, you said Bitdefender, all, they're all going to kind of go away once Microsoft reaches that critical mass and says, like, look, we're going to protect all these computers with the best possible network that we can. Uh, you know, the Terminator. So we might gonna, as well go along with there's yeah. no point in protesting any of well, that. Well, you know, all this is going to stay in place until the Terminator comes back in the future and destroys Microsoft because <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. But, you know, in, in the same way, they, they are the ones that are so, kind of so lay back and enjoy yeah. it. Is that what you're saying? Well, lay back, enjoy, enjoy all this great stuff, this technology that we have out there. Um, and, you know, and hope there's, you know, there's no virus with your name on it. Well, yeah. And, and you know, share, share what you can, share what, you, uh, what, what your life is about, uh, you know, express yourself online. I mean, Really? Yeah, you, yeah. You're not saying no to that? No, no, you have to. In fact, in fact, I mean, this is a completely different conversation, but if you want to survive as a professional in this day and age... You have to communicate. Yeah, you have to communicate who are you, you know, who and what are you about as your career changes, you know, uh, through the years. Uh, your your brand identity has to remain intact, right? If you're a sales rep for, for one company and you move it to be a sales rep for the next company, then that following will go with you if you've built that together. But you've got to so, use yeah. common sense with that, too. I mean, these kids that... Tell all their you know secret stories, show all their secret pictures um, on Facebook and the like. They're asking for trouble. Well, I, I mean, I've, they, I've talked to these kids at high school. They they know about it. You know they they know that everything is essentially a digital tattoo. Anything you put on Facebook is archived forever. Anything you put on Instagram is archived forever. Snapchat as well. We're not going to talk about Snapchat because that's done with, right? So so Instagram, and Facebook is all we're going to talk about on Twitter. So those those three platforms, as long as you put something out on there, it's going to be continuously kept there. Now here's the, here's some good news. There are ways to actually flood your account and completely make anything you've done maybe seem anonymous or or ridiculous. So there are some ways to wipe up your tracks, but. 
that kind of uh, activity is really difficult to do. Well, I guess it's not too difficult for someone like you, of course. But the idea is, you know, you, you want to have that kind of digital footprint. And that digital footprint can either be good or can be bad. Well, I, yeah. you know, in large part, I think it can be bad. Look, you know, for example, we have government by Twitter now. Now, who would have thunk mm -hmm. a few years ago that we would have government by Twitter? And stock market by Twitter, too. It's not just Trump, yeah, yeah. either. It's a lot of other mm -hmm. leaders in the world sure. are, are, are expressing themselves through, through Twitter. And, you know, this has got to be changing the way government nation states work, the way, you know, global governance works. That one person who is a great apparent authority gets up and talks to millions, hundreds of millions, even billions on Twitter. Sure. In his pajamas at four in the morning, whatever comes to mind. This is really not a good thing, isn't it? I mean, doesn't that worry you about the future of the, of the human race? Well, I don't see how... Uh, what other direction are we going to go? There's too much power. Too much power in the hands it's of transparency. People. It's transparency you too, know. though. And, and I look. You talk mm -hmm. about Microsoft. Talk about Google. Talk about you know, Amazon and all that. It's only a handful. Apple. It's only a handful. A handful of what? Uh, of huge tech companies mm -hmm. that are having enormous effect in our lives, controlling our phones, our communication. Um, you know, my goodness, uh, you do so much with Google these days. Uh, suppose they decided to be evil all of a sudden. Um, you know, they could wreak havoc because there's so few of them and they do mm. talk to each other. Yeah, I, I've, I've heard that, you know, argument like, you know, what if Google turned evil overnight? And, you know, that would, that would kind of change the stock price. And also everyone at Google stands for the betterment of humanity. I mean, let's just start there. I mean, they have the right people, I hope, in positions that do the right thing. I mean, at the end of the day, do people do the right thing when push comes to shove? Most of the time they do. You know, you don't have people, you know, if they're running late to work, just go and plow over someone and, and kill them in the street. No, but and I am, I am you know, come on. not yeah, taking like, any steps yeah. against those hackers. Those hackers are having a way with me. Who? Uh, which hackers? The hackers, the ones who are attacking the utilities and the, the banks and the government. the hackers think that they're doing it. You know, you, you talk to a lot of people in every, every background. They think that they are doing the right thing. They feel that they are doing the best thing for humanity, for themselves, for the religion. Right, and religion is like a big one, especially if they're if they're out there doing religion. You can't talk to them about anything else. And you know the, the the hackers that are in North Korea, what do they think? What do they think they're doing? They're doing the right thing to fund their nuclear uh, weapons program. That's that's what they're releasing ransomware for, and they're collecting money and they're laughing all the way to the bank. You listen to some of the, and they're on YouTube. You can go see them. All these all these scammers that are out there and they're being recorded. Uh, they're coming from uh, Middle East and uh, India and Pakistan. All these little you know kind of that kind of general part of the world, you know, that general part of the world has got a lot of animosity towards America. They feel that they're doing the right thing for their family, for their culture, and they're living in the dirt and in, and in disease and in, in uh, poverty, and, and uh, you know, they can't feed their families. And if they can get a few bucks out of an old lady in, uh, in Arkansas, well, you know, so be it. That's, she can keep on living, and she's going to be better off than they are. So you gotta, you got to have some empathy. It's a new kind of democratization. Sure. Sure. It's, a, it's a kind of democratization where the, the good guys are, are good and the bad guys are good. The good guys are, could be bad, and the bad guys could be good. And it's, it goes to the whole thing about fake news. Uh, you know, where, who do you side with? Uh, who has the right, you know, moral approach? Well, everything but this is, is fake news. So let's just start there. Yeah. This is real. Okay, well, this, we this is, okay. well, yeah, we're not you, being told you, you, what you to say. You may say that, yeah. Attila, but I'll tell you, every time we have this conversation, I, I get a little Who's depressed <laughs> <laughs> and paranoid. He's more paranoid than I am. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, I, you know, this is so interesting, and I want to allow you, offer you one minute to, to try to tell people what, you, what message you want to leave with them. Uh, after this uh, uh, hepaphrenic discussion we've had. <laughs> well, uh, There's the camera. Well, uh, it's number one. There it is. They're waiting oh, for Oh, number you. one. Number yeah, one. Number okay. One. So many cameras here. Okay, well, look. Cybersecurity is one of those things that's not going away. It's something that you need to become educated on. And it's just like driving a car. Sometimes you need a license, and that's okay. So go ahead and get educated on all the things that are coming up. There's new information every single day. It's fun to talk about. Lots of people are interested in it, and lots of people are willing to share. Professionals like myself and others that are out there are really interested in involving the community and what we can do to better ourselves, better our nation, better our world. And, uh, you know, this new social platform that we've uh, embraced over the past decade or so has really helped to bring humanity to the next level. We look uh, forward to seeing when new changes come up in third world countries, how we can help these third world countries in uh, becoming better and educating themselves and getting out of real big problems. 
Uh, we hope that some of these uh, cybersecurity concerns that are uh, affecting critical infrastructure uh, don't really cause any sort of real human damage, and we hope that uh, there's a lot of uh, you know people out there that think that maybe they're doing the right thing, but uh, you know maybe they're going to come come to terms with who they are. Uh, we hope that uh, places like this continue where we can talk about cybersecurity issues and uh, how you can educate yourself and be, become better. And okay, we'll, really do, it yeah. we'll yeah, do it again. Yeah, let's do it again. Yeah. Uh, tell us the yeah. rest with uh, SOS Tech Solutions. I understand you're going to change your name to it's going to be okay, Tech Solutions. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Yeah, thanks, Abdullah. Okay.